Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this afternoon's session. Uh, this session is Security Analytics for Data Discovery, Closing the SIEM Gap. Uh, and your presenter is Eric Johansson from Firemon. So just some housekeeping. Um, if you have some questions towards the end, feel free to uh, load them up with the app that's available. Or if you could, if you prefer not to, uh, there's a handheld microphone that'll come around. If you could just wait till, raise your hand and I'll come around with the microphone. If you can just wait till the microphone gets to you to, uh, to give Eric your question, that'd be great. So Eric, as Senior Solutions Architect at Feynman, is dedicated to evangel evangelizing security analytics for data discovery. Prior to Feynman, Eric worked in incident response, managed security services, and helped launch a cloud-based security monitoring platform. He brings nearly 20 years of experience with data visibility, including experiences of both success and failure leading to a deeper understanding of what truly works for organizations who struggle with discovering the unknown in today's mobile, virtual, and cloud-based environments. Please welcome Eric Johansson. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, first, just wanted to talk a little bit about my background. Uh, but before that, I hope that you guys get a lot out of the talk. I, I really enjoyed uh, researching it. and. Uh, found out a lot of things, and I'm, I'm just really passionate uh, about this subject, and I hope that it proves to be valuable for you guys. So a little bit more about my, my background. Um, worked for the virus cert and incident response within uh, IBM. Uh, then I was an MSS architect at uh, a couple of organizations. And uh, my last and uh, prior to this position, uh, made a foray into more of the sales side, and that was a bit of a mistake. And so now I'm back into the, the technical side of things. and so. Uh, realize I'm not, uh, that's not my thing. I like to be a little more technical on, on that side of the house. So kind of give you an overview of uh, what I'm going to be covering today. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about hunting. And then I'm going to talk about the SIM gap and ways that you know, we can cover that. Um, and then also talking about the problem with hunting and the solution. And talk about unknowns and how to turn them into knowns. Uh, and then I'll wrap it all up. Hopefully, give you guys uh, some time for questions. Uh, but I'll be at the booth uh, at Firemon if you guys have any questions afterwards or, or want to see anything later. So what is hunting? Um, this is kind of a new term. And you know, I'm afraid it's become a little bit of a buzzword. Um, but it actually is quite important. Uh, it, it's a proactive versus reactive approach to identifying incidents. Um, you know, the reactive side of it is a notification comes in. Uh, you receive that notification, and that's when your incident starts. And that's how a lot of organizations work. Uh, or even worse, they get a call from maybe a three-letter agency or somebody else like that, and they realize that they've been compromised, and that's when the incident starts. So the proactive side of it is actively looking for incidents and using things like patterns, uh, intelligence, or even hunches. Uh, to find information within your data and, and finding threats uh, before you have to react. So <clears throat> there's been uh, a lot of recent work uh, based in, like defining hunting. And one of those is this particular uh, model, uh, hunting maturity model that's put together by uh, David Bianco. And I'm not going to go through each step, uh, but needless to say, the one on the far left there is the basic, you know, uh, not really doing any hunting, which a lot of organizations are, are facing today. Now, there's three factors that contribute to uh, moving forward in that hunting maturity model. Uh, one of them is the quality of data. Uh, as a lot of you realize, you know, from the SIM world and, and uh, you know, uh, log management, the more data, the better. Although a lot of us have recognized that as you get more data, uh, you can get higher bills from your SIM vendor, which that can be a problem as well. So then a lot of the shift has now kind of been, you know, quality. So, uh, you know, there's a little bit of a balance there. Uh, tools provided to access and analyze the data. And so that's, that's another component that I'm going to talk about pretty, uh, quite a bit today, is ways that you can access data rapidly and perform analysis rapidly. Uh, because uh, I'll get to this a little later, but in my opinion, SIM is, is not well suited uh, for rapid data analysis and triage. Uh, and then finally, of course, the skills of the analysts that are using the data and actually doing the hunting. Um, 
And there's several maturity indicators. So, you know, uh, in the interest of time and, and not reading every single line here, um, threat intel is one of the early indicators of uh, hunting maturity. Uh, data analysis procedures and processes, having those in place, that's another maturity indicator uh, further down the line. Uh, and finally, uh, one of the more, you know, essentially at the far right, that HMM4 is tying automation in with your hunting as much as possible. So, you know, the talk is about security analytics. Uh, I'm just a solutions uh, architect from Firemont, so uh, let me, you know, refer to some experts. Uh, Gartner just refer, uh, released a paper uh, in April about the fast evolving state of security analytics. And uh, essentially, they are being, they're being integrated because rule and signature based prevention systems and tuning processes are not uh, doing a good job of uh, stopping or preventing breaches. And uh, we'll get into some elements here that can help change that using security analytics. So, what's the definition of the SIM gap? Uh, the thing with SIM, I'm a big fan of SIM in my history. I've, I've done a lot of work with SIM. I still continue to do work with SIM. And I'm not suggesting that SIM goes away by any means. Um, but the, the, the thing with SIM today is that it was designed the best it could around 10 years ago uh, with the technology of the day. So the advantage that security analytics has today is there have been a lot of improvements in virtualization, in processing power, uh, in database technologies. So, you know, we're all familiar with Hadoop and Elasticsearch and those types of technologies that have really created that uh, a better way to access data and to get more data. So, SIM is designed for the known. You can normalize and parse logs that are defined and there's the comp compatibility. You know, your SIM has to have, you know, an idea of what this, the log looks like so it can put it in the right buckets for analysis. The alerts are based on policy. So, essentially known, right? You have to know that something's coming to make this machine smart. Uh, the reporting is predefined. And there's automated data, data analysis by the system, which is essentially designed to be mostly hands off from the human, right? You spend a lot of time doing tuning and setting up alerts and all of this work. And the idea is the machine will go through those vast quantities of data and create output, which are alerts. And then you can go in and, and triage and investigate those alerts. But what that boils down to is if there's not a rule, a policy, a report, or an alert, nothing is detected by the SIM. So it's not really designed for human interaction, and that's the kind of what I'll get into here uh, moving forward. So I know there's a couple other perspectives here uh, related to SIM. Gartner uh, challenges complexity, a lot of performance limits, uh, data variety challenges, so we talked about parsing. Uh, a lot of new environments coming up, and then the analysis. Where is the analysis in the SIM component? ESG group uh, requires advanced skills and knowledge. Big problem with SIM, right? I bet a lot of you folks have SIM, and you probably have one, two, maybe three individuals, maybe a couple more if you're a really advanced organization, that understand how to utilize a SIM. And what that does is it creates a gateway or a barrier to access to data. The, the advantage of security analytics is it allows more people to access the data quicker which then allows you to have uh, better analysis with more people that have intelligence about your business looking at things. So let's take a look at the evolution of data analysis. Um, I've been doing some demos at the, the Firemon booth, and a lot of people you know, comment that, hey, it looks like Splunk. And that's very true in a lot of ways in terms of the security analytics technologies out there today. Uh, but there's some differences, right? So one of the main things with analytics, of course, is using the analytics components um, to actually bubble up the unknown data within your environment and, and the interesting data um, so you can find those things. You have that intelligence. You understand what's right and what's wrong. So, you know, just moving through this, right, your structured data, uh, example products, things like ArcSight, visualization was a big thing that came along with Splunk, and then you have your data scientists that really love to get into that regex with Splunk and query and do a lot of great things. Splunk is awesome. Um, and now... What we're doing here with security analytics is helping discover the unknown, because that's really kind of one of the gaps out there right now is there's so many products. You've got IDS, you've got antivirus, you've got SIM. They're, they're, they're telling you what's known in your environment and when it's happening. So how do you find the unknown? Now, I talk about hunting. Like, yeah, let's all start hunting. We can all do that. Um, there's a lot of experts, um, Anton at Gartner being one of them, that is really bullish on the fact that hunting is not something 
that everyone can do. Uh, it's a very one percenter, so to speak, activity that only the experts of experts can effectively hunt. Uh, one of the elements that I'm gonna talk about here is the most sophisticated analytic on the planet, which is your mind. So we're gonna focus on the human layer of analysis and using analytics uh, to really get into your data and find the unknown and the unusual. So the shift from known to unknown is pretty difficult to uh, comprehend. Um, I've only been at Firemon for about six months and it's been a journey for me as being a sim person at the start and having to learn really that this gap exists. So you have your known on the left and this to me really represents the sim. You're reporting on answers, so you essentially collect data to, to answer those questions. So that's part of that known and, and structured side. And at the start, you're developing a list of questions. So, you know, what questions do I wanna ask? Let's get my data for that, and then let's report on the answers to that, those questions. Going to the unknown side, you have no list of questions, you collect everything, and you use analytics to explore the data and discover things in your environment. And the, the important thing with security analytics working is it has to be easy, it has to be fast, because it needs to encourage curiosity and exploration within your data. If you find an anomaly, you can't click on something and have to go make a sandwich to wait for the result. It has to be very rapid, otherwise you're not going to want to explore because you'll be penalized. So let's talk about some techniques for the unknown that security analytics brings to the table. So machine learning is another big buzzword that's been kind of thrown around out there. And when you're working with large data sets, whether it's you know, the last hour's worth of data, the last day's worth of data, or you're just working with a large packet capture, how can you possibly analyze that file rapidly? And one of the technologies that's out there is event clustering. Event clustering takes the commonality of all the data from the period that you're evaluating, so say it's the last hour, and it puts those into buckets. So essentially you're able to see you know, out of a million logs, it might put it into a, a, a 20 line bucket of the different variants on those logs. Then you can see what's unique and different within that by clicking through and evaluating that information. So event clusters is a, a, a great way to kind of find the unknown within large data sets. Another component is association analytics. Exploring frequency in your data in different categories. So looking at frequent and infrequent information uh, in areas like IP address, uh, taking a look at geolocated data and showing you that ranked frequent and infrequent. So for example, look at the infrequent geolocation information about you know, countries that you may not do business with or just countries that you don't know why they're in your data. You can click on it and it's certainly not a smoking gun, but it's a way for you to quickly and rapidly analyze something and find something interesting. Activity and change. So compare data sets and time frames for differences. So what's trending up, uh, what's trending down, what's new, which is a huge element, right? So if I'm looking at my data set and I'm saying, what's new in my data since yesterday? That's very powerful. Because why is something new in my environment? Did something go wrong? Did something break? Do I have a duplex issue? Is there a misconfiguration? Or is there something else wrong? So why is it new? Why is it in my environment? And what is it? So you can quickly use your uh, use your brain to analyze that and find out if it's uh, legitimate. An another element is uh, cohort analysis. So you can essentially say guilt by association, right? So you're uh, taking a look at a piece of data and you might have some suspicions about that piece of data. Similarly to, you know, somebody robs a bank, you're gonna go talk to their family and their friends and see if there's some kind of, you know, way that they were involved with that. And, uh, uh, you know, so this is a way to take a look at a piece of data that you have some suspicion about and see where else it's been interacting in your data. So speaking of that, you know, one of the big ways that we're able to really take a look and visualize data is you know, using our eyes to, to do that visualization and perspective analysis. So look at things, find the outliers and explore. So with the geolocation data, of course, you've got a map which shows you all these different areas that your, your, your data is, is, is involved in. Being able to click around, being able to find interesting things is very powerful. Uh, then, of course, uh, taking a look at things that are happening in real time, streaming into your environment, along with the search. You know, the search represents the past, and then you have the real time coming in. And then any time, any kind of data that you're looking at, just seeing how that data looks for that period that you're evaluating and seeing if there's blips or other interesting things. Like, for example, if you're looking at a user uh, that typically works 9 a.m. to 5 in a certain time zone, 
and there is uh, activity that's happening every 15 minutes throughout the entire day, you know, you may be looking at some kind of automated process or something like that. That's something that you can pick out fairly easily, easily using visualization. So that's where that can be valuable. <clears throat> and finally, uh, well, not finally, but uh, natural language processing is actually a, a really big component um, to this as well because the search has to be very easy. Uh, it has to be something that's Google-like. It's easy to use. Anyone can use it. Um, and the idea behind it is to make it your go-to first for your IT data, right? So, you know, let's say, let's use an example. Uh, you know, we all have vehicles of some sort. Uh, if something is wrong with that vehicle, whether it's a car, a scooter, a bike, whatever it is, we might go to Google, put in the make and model or other information about that particular vehicle, and Google is going to give us information about it, right? The manufacturer website, places where you can get it repaired, um, and other information that you know, somehow just seems magical, right? Because it's just all very relevant, and uh, you might be able to find you know, parts and all those types of things. And that's the same idea behind security analytics, is when you do a search, whether it's for an IP or a term, you know, putting in just a word, dropped or you know, blocked or flopping, um, you'll get data that is uh, related to your search, and then you can use the analytics to find other things. And because security analytics is very good at taking in any kind of data, any human readable data, there has to be a way that natural language processing is applied to that data so it can infer what's happening. So, Using verbs, you know, actions, seeing, allow, deny, block, fail, you know, that can be mapped to an action. Subjects, so addresses and usernames, proper nouns. Uh, various other parts of, sp of speech that can add nuance to the log and really help you understand what's happening. And it's got to be fuzzy, and there has to be that, that metadata that's there that adds that uh, extra layer of enrichment. Uh, and so, you know, unlike SIM, the idea is to have just a giant bucket where all data that you're bringing in is searchable, every single bit of it. So another component, we talked about being able to get in all the data. This is another important part of it. So you have to be able to take in all the data. So support for clustering for big data and also federation to eliminate data politics is very important. The data politics angle is what I mentioned earlier where you talk about SIM and you know, how there's usually a handful of indiv individuals that have access to SIM and have expertise. Um, eliminating that and allowing more people to have access to the data will allow you to find more things in your environment and find more issues and problems. <clears throat> You've gotta have the flexible real-time data collection, so um, all the kind of things that you're used to, right? Your, you know, syslog, NetFlow, all those types of things. Um, but even go further, streaming packet capture is a great capability. Um, any TCP UDP port, you can literally net cat data over, you can do whatever you want, pipe it over and the system will take it in. And you can create as many collectors that you want, really as many collectors as there are ports. And with those collectors, you can define the different repositories, you can define the time to live of that data. Security analytics is very focused on real time and, and near real time data. So we're not here to archive data for you know two years or something like that. Uh, but in the case that you want to get to the archive, drag and drop import. Use the browser to take archive data uh, that you found or data that you discovered through the process of your investigation. Bring it into the system and analyze it with everything else. Take a packet capture, bring it into the system, apply analytics to it. Use event clusters to find out what exactly happened within that packet capture. Or go to the archive and grab you know, 90 days worth of data related to a specific uh, suspicious host that you've discovered recently gives you that ability to complete the picture. I'm from Minnesota, so I put a, a snowman there. <clears throat> and as I mentioned before, take in anything readable, Office files, Outlook PST, PDF, packet capture, configuration files, <clears throat> thread intel and CMD da CMDB data. So all important stuff. The other side is with security analytics and, and SIM or any tool that we're doing um, investigation or analysis, you have to be able to do collaboration, right? Everyone's working as a team, so within the data, you have to be able to do things. One of the things is pinboard technology, which is you take all the different queries that you're running or things that you are commonly looking at, and you can actually tag those queries and place them on a pinboard and then revisit them and share that pinboard with other people within the organization. And then do tagging and notes. So you can create automatic tags based on a profile of a piece of data. You can add notes manually, like here in the bottom of the screen. Um, and just add something very quickly that refers to uh, what you discovered and that you're investigating or that you know, something is related to it. And then you have 
going further and more advanced as we're moving down the scale for hunting maturity, the automation side of things. So workflow, create repeatable processes within your data. Essentially whiteboard something with your business analyst and then map that within your data of something that's repeatable and that'll happen. And then also the remote capability. So uh, being able to shell script things and run things on a repeatable basis. So agent-based functionality, for example, in all of your remote networks, you can have an agent that will do packet capture on demand or will run things like NetStat. So if certain things happen in your environment, have different scripts run automatically. So when you go in to do that triage and that investigation, the data is waiting for you in the system. There's no need to do it. So that's why I believe security analytics is a path to hunting maturity. Here are a few different use cases. You've got your data accessibility, discover from uh, you know, more data, grabbing uh, log files, packet captures, as easy as uploading into Dropbox. Incident response, so find out the incident context, drag log files from multiple sources into the system, retain the original date, and create time correlated views. Rapid event triage, so discovering the cause, uh, automatically correlate alerts and human data uh, with automatically enriched infrastructure data, that geolocation and other different metadata that's automatically added to the system. And hunting, discovering the unknown. So the idea that you're searching for things that are just potentially high risk, uh, different characteristics that you're interested in that may indicate something. So kind of wrapping things up here. Uh, how long did I go? Oh, pretty good. Um, so. Let's, let's take a look at this hunting maturity model again and just kind of review some of the things that I talked about here. So you talked about the more data, the better. So that's the idea of security analytics. You can bring in as much as you want with big data. Tools provided to access and analyze the data. Ease of use, security analytics brings that to the table. Uh, the skills, that's something that you guys will have to develop. That's certainly not something that everyone is born with. But because the analytics focuses on the human layer of analysis and really you guys have business intelligence, you understand your network, and so when you're looking at the analytics and you're seeing you know, something new in the frequent IP address or something odd with the event clusters, you're gonna automatically know that that's something weird and you're gonna just go investigate that, and that's, that's a quick way to find something interesting within your data. So the maturity indicators, threat intel, that's you can bring that in, drag and drop import, take any threat intel that you have, whether it's a Symantec deep site or you know, some other vendor that you subscribe to. Uh, the data analysis procedures, so all the processes and automation that you can tie into it and reuse that. So extremely powerful as well. And that's it. I've left uh, a lot of time for questions, so uh, fire away. Or don't. Oh, uh, I'm not selling anything. I'm uh, merely talking about security analytics, so. All right, well, thank you very much. Um, I will be at the booth for the remainder of the conference. Uh, the Firemom booth is, is near the entrance. Uh, I love this stuff. I love talking about data. I love all of it. So uh, bring your you know, questions, problems. Happy to help. Uh, thanks a lot. <laughs>